right, let's break down this Paw Sox Stadium deal. Listen carefully. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Now look, I've been clear that I think the Paw Sox are an investment that this community needs to continue to do and have. Uh, and I know a lot of you out there who are jaded by 38 Studios and all sorts of public-private partnership poison understandably feel like government is not to be trusted, rich people don't need to be have partners, and uh, they ought to do baseball if they want to do baseball all by themselves. Now, somewhere in the middle, I think reasonable people are trying to figure this whole thing out. Tonight on the broadcast, we will forego our rundown, and we will talk with the mayor of Pawtucket, who I think has done an incredible job in a high wire rack trying to keep this deal together, and one of the big cheeses of the Paw Sox to explain the numbers to us. So welcome aboard for this Friday evening. Now, if anything happened today uh, that usurps this conversation. You should know on the Friday shows we record on Thursday. We'll catch up on Monday. Uh, but I think most likely um, it's probably pretty much status quo other than maybe a couple of politicians chirping uh, and all that kind of thing. Here's a headline the Valley Breeze put up. We like to shake it around when it comes to the headlines. And here's uh, a Night Witness News kind of recap yesterday about what's going on with the deal. The Paw Sox and the city of Pawtucket pitching a new ballpark on the Apex site immediately off I-95. The team asking state taxpayers for $23 million over the next 30 years, about a quarter of the total cost to be repaid by ballpark-related revenues. The Paw Sox are including other incentives, the governor calling the package, quote, much better than what she scrapped two years ago. State GOP Chair Brandon Bell says the concept isn't right for Rhode Island. That's not the way it should work when we're 50 out of 50 in just about every category. Um, we cannot afford to give fat cats money for a venture like this. It's a shakedown. My partner in crime at the RNC, Steve Fries, did, a, did a, an article about this. And he was politifacted, and there's no positive impact on economic growth, on tax growth, on employment growth. Um, there is there is no proven positive impact when you give money to publicly financed stadiums. Um, we shouldn't be that stupid. A 2008 review of 20 years of academic research agreed. Experts said stadium and arena revenues aren't enough to balance the public investments. And Bell argues the 23 million state contribution would likely be higher in light of interest paid. If they leave, they leave. I'm a huge baseball fan. I would hate to see them go. I love the idea of having a replica of Fenway. But <laughs> money-wise, it doesn't work. We have to think about the taxpayers first. Listen, Brandon Bell's a smart guy. You'll introduce, I'll introduce my guest in a second. But let me tell you, I, I got to get him here. You know, we have a good rap, he and I. I have to tell you something. I am so disgusted that he hasn't done a lick of work as to what the mechanics of this financial package are. And that is no way to run a Republican Party. You know, pot shots from uh, center field or the cheap seats, the euchre seats, are no way, you know, to gain ground and, and uh, relationship. Uh, you know, with the state of Rhode Island, unless you just want to feed on the 38 Studios beast and the psychology of that, which is really what these two guys, in part, are dealing with. The good mayor of Pawtucket, the vice president general manager of the Paw Sox, Dan Ray, Don Grevian. Uh, you know what? I forgot to ask for the clip, but the very old show we did on this one, the whole thing came tumbling down. I think the number was 10 percent, right? You yes, said, yes. I said, out of one Nothing. out of 10, you, can you save this deal? I don't know. I'm going to try. It's a one out of 10. The last time you came here, I said, what? And you said, hey, six or seven or something like that. Where are we now? So we're there. Um, you know, we've still got some hurdles to go, you know, with the General Assembly. But we presented on Tuesday a framework which clearly, clearly protects the, the residents, the taxpayers. We've heard, you know, the league has stepped up, uh, putting up $45 million, um, which it will be about 60 percent of the ballpark, and it's about 52 percent of the overall development. All right, we'll talk about the numbers yeah, in a second. Ahead. But Vivian. in general... Background and Dan, welcome. You, Thank you, Dan. Uh, you know, Jim Skeffington, God rest his soul, was the mover and shaker, really the designee and, and chief negotiator as the new partners of the Paw Sox took over for the Mondor organization when they bought it and tried to run this Providence thing down everybody's throat. Recapping, do you admit, um, uh, as a Paw Sox uh, executive here, that that was a mistake? I think Jim was Mr. Providence. Jim knew the scene, he knew the terrain. I came in here along with Charles Steinberg uh, and, and Larry more fully late in 2015, and we knew that we had to hit the reset button. So I give a lot of credit to the man across the table here. 
Uh, his administration, his group has been great to work with. They've been proactive, they've been solutions oriented, and there's been a real reset of the relationship. And it started back in November, December of 2015. I think we called you up one day and said, you know, Mr. Mayor, some of the street signs here could use some work. And the next Monday, you know, he was on it. So we saw right away uh, that this is a guy who knows how to lead, uh, knows how to work with the private sector, and we've had a great relationship. So being able to go from that state previous that, um, you know, uh, that, that, that was, that was transpiring in Providence to this one here where we have a real opportunity to extend this great public-private partnership between the Paw Sox and the city and, and more largely with the state of Rhode Island. Um, it's a great opportunity and testament to this gentleman. You work. and Dr. Steinberg come down as the new bosses uh, and, and take over this whole thing. Um, so this is kind of phase three. There was the Mondor legacy. There was the partnership takeover with SCEF. Mm -hmm. And God rest his soul, he passed away uh, tragically and unexpectedly. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have to tell you, I, my projection is this is an unprovable. But even if he was alive and well today, I wish he was, mm -hmm. I think the deal would have run into a wall in the city of Providence because people didn't like the, 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 the numbers. And you would have been sitting there lurking, trying to pick up the, the pieces anyway. That, right. that he passed and everyone did a reset mm -hmm. is the weirdness of the way the world turns. Yep. But right. you would have wanted it. You were lurking there as the jilted girlfriend, waiting, <laughs> uh, looking to repair the relationship. Uh, quick story. Larry Lucchino and I did the marriage at the uh, Follies <laughs> event to consummate your conversations. Yeah, the I missed the so Follies so, this so, year, but, yeah. but that's kind but you're of. Right, absolutely. And, and, you know, I said it was good leadership, uh, was team commitment, and part of it is I've learned better to be lucky than good. And what was really helpful with us, and some wise old gentleman told me a long time ago, don't tell me about how good the deal is or what the deal is. Tell me about the partners and the people that I'm working with. And that was always stuck with me in all, everything I do, so I was able to build that value, or try to build that value, and I think we have built that value um, through this whole, these conversations and all of these meetings that we've had, so. And, and we wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the mayor, because he came in, again, it was wipe the slate clean, let's reset it, let's look at this situation. You know, we did the McCoy study, uh, which took us, what, eight, nine months, I think, of, yeah. of hard work to get that done, um, and then springboard from that into this new discussion, right. uh, along with the Commerce Corporation. So it, it's this gentleman who's helped really drive it. So I could, I could baffle you with all sorts of data and numbers right. here, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to just talk it through. When, in our next segment, we're going to talk about the actual structure of this financial proposal, and then we're going to talk about the politics of it so you have expectations for the way the rest of the show is going. But the reality is, and a concept that I think a lot of the debate is missing right now, is that we are in a public-private partnership with the Paw Sox as we speak. McCoy, as we speak, is a publicly owned mm -hmm. facility for which you pay rent in this the legal mechanism between state and Pawtucket anyway. Correct. We have a formula of existing right. that fo folks seem to forget. Right and we have a, what, s near $70 million bill on renovating McCoy anyway. Fair. And, and I think the other thing that doesn't come I mean, out... It's not my proposal. I'm no, just saying that's no, I, what I, I understand absolutely. the numbers and, to be, correct? And so, yeah. Right. Yeah. Agreed. And the only other thing that people keep forgetting is the revenue that generates from the ballpark now is about $1.9 million currently to the state. That would be lost as well if they were to go. The revenue from? From the McCoy, whether it be the taxes, uh, income taxes, the hot dogs, the hamburgers, the food, the hotel. Visitors all, taxes, a whole, a whole range of, of taxes. So it's near $2 million Correct. coming into the economy. Right now. Right now. And right projected now. Even at, at with, a, the, with the, and forgive the term, the crappy attendance figures you've been suffering yes, with yes. lately. A, a $2 million current number, uh, we have a reasonable projection in a new ballpark. Um, ideally the Slater Mill Ballpark, that it would be about $3 million a year. So you're talking a range of about 2 to $3 million a year in what we call because you think taxes. Because you this, this would revitalize the conversation. The, the attendance would begin to go back up because... It would, because we, we've seen it in, in case after case after case after case of major league venues, minor league venues. Uh, when ballparks are well designed and well located, and we think that we have the team to design it well, and we think we have the location and the partners to do it well, uh, when they're well located and well designed in new areas, um, team attendance uniformly will spike. Show and, the picture, Jess, if you will, the, 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 the Slater Mill proposal for just a second. Everyone wants to know, where's the parking? <laughs> where are you going to park? There, there will be plenty of parking. We've worked with the mayor, actually. He and his team have really helped with this conversation, figuring out, I believe there are 1,600 um, public spaces within a half mile 
3,200 private spaces, so about 5,000 total spaces within that half mile so radius. So people are going to be hawking parking spaces? At, Not at, necessarily. I think some could. There's, I think a, lot some of, could. there's could. a lot of public spaces a lot of public that we have. Spaces. The parking uh, garage, the parking lot across But there City is Hall. no new parking lot that's going to be built around no. the stadium? Well, in the rendering, there is Because it's going to be urban -ish. Well, it, it, yeah, it, it's more along the lines of, again, a, a Fenway Park or some of the urban ballparks you've seen that have not necessarily one 3,000 person parking space because that's really not the best thing for a ballpark's atmospherics anyway, but you have different lots in different areas, so some might be public, some might be private, some might be team controlled. Um, but what we know is that one of the bedrocks of McCoy's success has been affordable, ample parking, and this ballpark would follow in those same steps. And again, the mayor is helping us with yeah, that Yeah, but this doesn't feel like the space around the new stadium will feel like the space around McCoy. No, it's a different it, it, it's, it's a different. It's a different, it's a different model, really, Dan. It's, it's more, again, along the lines of other urban ballparks that make it work with, again, smaller but, but multiple different lots around the it's area. It's charming at Fenway because it's, uh, the, it's the premier thing. It ain't charming in another venue, so you're going to have to make but sure. But we've, we've seen in other, uh, particularly minor league venues, in downtown ballparks like Durham, Charlotte, Indianapolis, Toledo, they make it work by having, again, a lot of options around the ballpark. It's just not one big 3,000 person lot. All right, we come back to the numbers, because you know what? It's all about the numbers. Stay with us. This proposal um, appears to me um, to be that the ballpark would pay for itself uh, and would be self-supporting. So here's the thing. Uh, Dan Ray is the vice president general manager of the Paw Sox. You know this guy. He's the mayor of Pawtucket. Don Grebian. Okay. It's an $83 million project mm -hmm. as we speak, correct? Correct. $10 million to acquire the property? That's what we're presuming, yes, with that based on appraisals, but we're still having ongoing conversations with the owner. But okay. that's the with, number we With the use. Apex building? With the Apex, right. correct. And $73 million. Jess, can you put up some numbers here so, so we can go slowly here? The Paw Sox, and Dan's not happy with the way I wrote this thing down, uh, <laughs> and, and that's fine because uh, we'll talk it through. Uh, $12 million in down money coming from the Paw Sox. Uh, which leaves, in my judgment, 70, 71 million dollars in, 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 in mechanisms of financing in a simple, just two-tier equity and financing because the deal is 83 million dollars. Second page, uh, 33 million dollars in post stocks payments over 30 years and what the mayor is trying to explain to me is that through a Pawtucket Redevelopment Authority combination uh, double toe loop financial move here, 23 million dollars from the state and 15 million dollars from Pawtucket. So that number adds up so all of that number adds up to the uh, the uh, 83 uh, million dollars here's the challenge that I have okay come off the screen 33 million dollars you position that as equity but because you're making those payments over a 30-year period of time mm -hmm. I'm confused mm -hmm. as to what where that money is going to be directed sure so, so what makes up yep. a million of uh, the, the, the that 33 million and where does it direct? Sure. So that $33 million is a combination of team rents starting at a million dollars a year um, and team naming rights that we would get from a corporate partner for that we would years. bring in for 30 years that we would bring in and then give back as part of the payment of the bonds. So that's, again, about a million and a half to start. It grows every year by, I think, a couple percentage points. So over the course of the 30 years, um, it, it, it's in present value terms, $33 million, which added to the $12 million in equity that you had up there is a $45 million present day contribution by the ownership. Okay, but the, thir but the actual total payments over the 30 years mm -hmm. is what number? Ballpark. <laughs> 50 something, I think, in terms of the aggregate altogether. Over I've said the 30 this to years. Dan when I was trying to figure out the numbers prior to the show, and I'm going to say it again. You guys are just, you got to redo this. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks it's $33 million in total value. You got Brandon Bell at that package talking about the added, the, 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 the interest, the blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I don't, I, it's a, the mistake you're making is not. A dishonest one. Yeah, you're mis I think it's a mistake to say it's thirty-three million dollars in real value, today value, because the truth is, just like when you borrow a house and you get a mortgage right. for two hundred grand, the real the, payments are three hundred seventy-nine thousand well, dollars over the so tour of that it's, year. It's a, it's a fair question, Dan, and it's sort of again, yeah. How how do you look at a house payment? I buy a house for two hundred. 
but I pay 370000 over the course of the mortgage, you know, do you put it in terms of the present value of the house or the mortgage amount? I think most people would say the house amount. So that's sort of how we're putting it in the present term. Well, you know what? Putting Just everyone, add it in. $33 yeah. million dollars of present I, I term what, money and $50,000, yeah. $50 million yeah, over and the I course think, of the nut. I, so, it's, it, it's a point well taken, Dan, but I think what's, what's, what's really important here are sort of the percentages right. because whether you gross it out over the long term or you look at it in present value terms, what you're ultimately looking at is that sort of percentage of share. And so our percentage here, as the mayor said earlier, is 62% of the ballpark itself, 54% of the total project cost. And there are different ways to explain it. Um, I think there's a danger sometimes in getting too uh, muddled or too deep into the numbers, but you have to still explain mm -hmm. it. And I think yeah. like, we're, I said we're two quick things. So one, I, I wish no, no. So, so listen, number one is that we did this as a framework because we wanted to make sure. We, we understand it, right? We did it as a framework to make sure that everybody got some information because we didn't want to look at like we're jamming this down anybody's throats. Now the city is sitting down with our bond council, with, um, uh, with our bond councils, working out the language that we're going to introduce hopefully by next week. Is our goal is to have the language, specific language out there. But to the point of the money is you're absolutely right. The, the borrowing of the $33 million would go through the PRA, right? And the, the Pawtucket Redevelopment, Redevelopment, Redevelopment Agency. Authority. 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 PRA, right? We have not worked out because depending on how we structure the agreement with the state, the 1.5 in today's dollars would be probably paid to the state with a revenue line coming in to pay that $33 million debt plus all the interest. So they're responsible for that. Okay. Now you sit there and you've got the other up to $38 million between the state and the city. You've got the 23 and the 15. Our 15, the city's 15, will be paid for by through uh, presuming that we get to 15, it all depends on the land deal, it depends on infrastructure, but ours is all based on the Brailsford study, we'll see that the uh, ancillary development is going to happen. There will be a direct line of revenue coming in so it doesn't come out of our taxes, okay, so uh, on the current taxes, it'll come out of new, just like we would do a tax stabilization agreement, it would almost be like a 30-year agreement and those dollars go to there. We have to go to the city council for that, but this is how we're presenting it. The $23 million dollars Right from the state, from the state, and we're hoping that, that, that we're, we're trying to get them to give a little more for the community as well. But that money there would be 1.2 million dollars on the new revenue, not taking in the existing revenue on the new revenue, and they would pay that. New revenue is defined as what? New revenue through real estate tax, through um, all of the new revenue through the McCoy, well, through the Paw Sox organization. So everything is generated. Hot dog sales. Hot dogs, tickets, blah, blah, blah. tickets the income okay, taxes. So that's a projection. That's not a real. That's not a guarantee. Your million well, and a half ish a year mm -hmm. is a guarantee. It's a, it's, it's a contractually obligated sum that we. But pay. the other part is projected yeah. revenue. Correct. So will there be some kind of security for that projected revenue? So, In other words, if you well, don't crack the nut, you think you will. Well, I, I think I think we will because again, to go back to the earlier math that we were discussing. Right now, in our current state, we generate about $2 million a year right. in, 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 in revenues for the state. In this new ballpark, Is that sufficient, by the way, that $2 million that we have now, sufficient for this, for this nut? Or does it have to be the $3 million? No, no. It, I mean, it, it could, again, keep in mind, it, it's the, the nut or the, the, the debt payment is about $1 million. So currently, we're doing about $2 million in revenue to the state. In the new ballpark, you would have $3 million projected in a sort of realistic case scenario to the state. That doesn't even get into, though, the possibility of ancillary development around the ballpark, taxes that might be spun off from that. So there are multiple layers of cushioning here, Dan, that I think provide reasonable assurances but that this that, would work. But those revenues from the, from the ticket sales or, or the, the hot dog sales, that, that revenue produced by the activity at the ballpark ends up going to the state of Rhode Island's general fund. Right. And so this, is there a line item that you want out of the state budget uh, correlative to that money going into the yes. general fund that pays to these the, nuts to the to the de development authority. Yes. So there is a check the state of Rhode Island writes that is incumbent upon performance of the ballpark economy. Correct. And that's what we're trying to finalize with our bond council. That's the that's where we are now. That is what we are looking to do. So there'll be a direct payment from and the And if that office. economy doesn't perform at the three million that yeah. you hope Fair. it does, yep. Yep. is there some kind of stopgap measure where a party says we'll cover it and that's where we or are just the risk no. built into the deal and that's what we're trying to finalize all of that because we know there has to be protection what Dan should be saying right is the fact that 140 years baseball has been in history right 
we've had this. There's 160 different baseball organizations, right, that have never, ever gone back. I'm just asking these questions because, because a lot of people out there just ha are, are so poisoned about yeah, projections. Yeah, there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a risk mentality. We've heard this word here, risk. What's the risk here? And, and, and to echo the mayor's point, I think you have the baseball industry in general is a very stable industry. It's been around a century and a half. Um, Glenn Chaffin was here the other day. Says people are too old. Well, he's he's not. He's just he's not he's not right about that. I mean, there was a, there was a report I saw this morning, for instance, um, that baseball and softball have the highest youth participation rate, with 25 million kids playing it, and that number grew seven percent and eight percent for baseball and softball like last year. Right. So my point right. is, Dan. My point is though, because I want to strike back at this, because people yep. will say baseball is dying. Right. It's not. It's stable. It's strong, okay. and this team can be stable. I, I, I just think at the end of this economic conversation, I want to talk about the politics next. But I promise you that the missing link that you guys have right. to better Agreed. articulate is the 33 is a real present value and there's a real number close to 50. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is going to calm a lot of people. We'll talk about the politics of this when we come back. Stay with us. First of all, I would love to see the uh, Paul Sox stay here. Uh, I, I think they're an iconic Rhode Island treasure. Um, I think that it provides entertainment that very cost-effective entertainment for families, and people get to see the stars of the future. The Senate president here recently in the last few days, uh, yesterday on the radio, and I know based on timing, I probably have already talked to Speaker Mattiello on today's radio, but we recorded the show Thursday. You follow that? Uh, he said on WPRO that really this is the governor's deal and I'm rope doping My words. Unfair to my colleagues or the public to start a process anew uh, emanating out of Kentucky. So I I'm curious to see what the foundational work that's been done by the governor's office and the Commerce Corporation. If there is foundational work, we'll look at it. Look, you have risen in, in, in my analysis, and you know I don't blow smoke. I think you have led extraordinarily well here. You are a success story for the city of Pawtucket, but you, Mayor, are the mayor of the city of Pawtucket. Agreed. And you have limitations in terms of your juice. Mm -hmm. We know how this joint's run. The Speaker of the House runs this joint. The Senate President, who we saw there, will ride this thing out if the numbers make sense. But the Speaker's putting it on the Governor because they are like this right now. The Governor's going to have to go all in and make this her own and then hope that the Speaker's going to play ball, all pun intended. You see it any other way? Um, I think the governor, to her credit, has already come out and endorsed it. But she's got to know every nickel and dime, I dotted, T crossed, and she's got to make it her own. So, as you mentioned, the leadership comes from the city of Pawtucket, so that's why we're bringing our bond council in to finalize the legislation that the Pawtucket reps and senators will be introducing to the House. So you think that the only, I mean, Pawtucket's no small marvel in this entire mix, but do you think the city's politics can, can have very strong weight on the General Assembly's behavior. Absolutely, and I would tell you that when you look at it, it's more about the Blackstone Valley. So when you look at Mayor Murray, who was at this press conference with us, Mayor Diosa, Mayor Lombardi, Lieutenant Governor McKee, uh, Attorney General Kilmartin, there's enough You of think people. the weight of that is enough to make this thing move past the governor's exclusive endorsement? Absolutely. I, I mean, I think it and, should be. And, and how I think do you read it? Well, I, 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 I know a lot less about the situation than either of you do down in Rhode Island with politics here, but I thought that, that, that even John Tuesday with the mayors, with state legislators, with leaders, uh, was a really good one. To hear the governor's comments in, in the aftermath, to hear uh, Senate President Ruggiero, I think there is a, a groundswell that we can look at here that's going to come up around this deal and support what the mayor and other people in the Blackstone Valley are getting behind and, here. And the speaker, I understand it. I mean, this is, I understand where the speaker's coming from, right? We need to present it properly. We're going to have it presented. The numbers are going to be explained. better move fast. And because, it has to move fast. Because, because you know, right. everyone resents the last minute June stuff that goes okay. on in the General Assembly. Yep. Good work. Keep chugging. Thank you, Dan. Dan. Great to have you. Likewise, There'll Dan. be a lot more requests for communication on this, so I hope you'll be yeah. available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on the radio. We'll be right back to wrap up. Stay with us. Revenues that are already built into Paw Sox baseball with these new investments from the Paw Sox should crack this nut for a new ballpark. Should. What we need to do is listen to what the real numbers are, not prejudge them, and then ask the tough questions about how the whole thing rolls out. The politics of the thing will be interesting. The governor's going to have to own this because the speaker wants her to. But the thrust of Northern Rhode Island's political contingent may have the kind of effect that Don Grebian is talking about. It's fascinating. We'll talk more about it, of course, as we go next week, because time's of the essence for that project. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the radio at 3 on WPRO Monday to start off the new week. Enjoy the weekend. Good night.